Hello everyone. I hope you're all well. Happy Tuesday. Now, again, it's very hot, so I thought I'd pop along today and we'll just create something simple. Something simple mainly because it's just so warm upstairs at the moment. The heat rises and it's just poof, unbearable. So I thought I'd pop along and what we'll do is create something with this background that we created a couple of videos ago. So if you didn't see this video, if you just go back a couple of videos, I think it might have been on the Saturday. Um, it's only two videos ago. I created this background and I promised you that I would make something from this background. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's Pink Frog Smooth Card and it's four and a half inches by six and a half inches. Now I want to add some touches of white. So I thought I'd use my stencil Elongated Hearts, which is 156. And you guessed it, I've not got the copy of paper. Right. That's because we did, I did a bit of cleaning this morning. My little dog was up at 5 a.m. in the morning and now I'm delirious. So I'm going to use my Elongated Heart just to add some elements of white in here. And then the other element I thought I'd use is my new stamp set. It's going to be showcased once again in my new release bundle on Friday the 16th, which is this Friday, on Creating Craft TV at 3pm and 7pm. And Janet Pring will be demonstrating. So I thought I've done a couple of cards. So yesterday, let's bring the cards in from the new release. So yesterday's card was this one with just just love that flower so we did yesterday's card with that one and then we did a card with the blue which i also adore with the new release and then we did the hydrangea which is where we did that background which is why we're doing the other one here so this is the hydrangea where we created that background and then our first video just so you can see those there right let's just place those I need to remember to send them to the studios so I thought let's pull out the anemone and the reason I pulled out the anemone is because you've got these colors on and they work quite nicely with the the colours that are in the anemone. Now, let's just give this a blot, just to make sure we've got no pigment lying on the surface of the card. No. And what I want to do is just add some touches of white to this. So I'm going to grab a piece of cut and dry foam. And I've got my white embossing powder. Now I had a lady message me. Now obviously I understand that um, when I do a video, not all of them will be your cup of tea. But on this one, I embossed and then added the colour over the top. And then the ink resist resist the embossing and then what I did was I dried the embossing a little bit more so that some of the colour stuck to the embossing so that I got that effect. Now I love the white embossing against the white card. Now a lady mentioned that you know she uses clear embossing which I do sometimes onto the white card and then you put put the colour over it and then the clear embossing takes the colour that's on on the white card so you can do it either way. Um, but it also gives a different look than the white embossing. What I'm going to do this time, obviously I've sort of demonstrated and created cards and mixed media projects for about 28 years. And obviously in videos, you can only get so much across. You can't sort of repeat everything you've done over hundreds of videos or workshops, etc. So with each video, I try and remember to mention different little snippets that I rem remember along the way. So it's entirely up to you. But I like the white embossing on the surface as well, because that also gives a different look. So the first thing that you need to do when you've got colour already down, because on the first one, 
I added the embossing and then added the colour on the top. With this one, I've got the colour already down and I'm going to add the embossing on the top. Now, if I'm going to do that, I've picked this card up with my hands and obviously it's got the um, oxide on there. You think there's, it's not going to stick to that, but just to make sure, I'm going to add a little bit of my anti-static bag and I'm going to rub that anti-static bag all over my card also because it's very humid outside so that means my hands you know might have you know well might leave marks on the card so just make sure that you just dab down with your anti-static bag just as a precaution now what I'm going to do first, so we'll leave that on one side, we've brushed over with the anti-static bag. What we'll do next is we'll just take the anemone. Let's grab. Bear with me. What I'm going to do on this one I've done a couple of flowers that I've already coloured but what I'm going to do is I want to use my I didn't on the previous ones I've cut out I'm going to use my Canson um, Bristol Smooth White card and it's what GSM is it? I think it's 250 yes 250 so I've got the Bristol Smooth and I'm going to use this because I'm going to use my eco lines with it and I have to say after lots and lots of testing, I do like the Bristol Smooth the best for the Ecoline pens. I find they move a lot easier on the Bristol Smooth. That's just a personal choice. So I'm just going to, I've already cut two out and I'm just going to show you very briefly how I coloured the flower. So on the anemone, you've got my version of an anemone. So you've got the beautiful anemone here a little anemone with the flower head without the leaves and some of the anemones in the circle. And the reason I've done that is because it gives you so many options, even on an A6 stamp set. Let's move this stamp. It gives you so many options because this is a really good size flower. But then if I give you one that's slightly smaller, it means... Depending what project you do, if you do an ATC, you can still have a beautiful anemone on your ATC. Or you could have part of this one on an ATC. It gives you lots more options. And then this circle with the beautiful text in there is just a gorgeous background stamp. It's just beautiful. Let's just have a look at that stamp. When I do the YouTube videos, it's my opportunity... my opportunity just to touch base with you that's my main priority with the youtube videos you know because i like to touch base with you and stay in touch and just explain things in detail so i'm just going to use the circle now this in its own right if you repeated this all around the background would just look wonderful now i've not primed that stamp but look at that and it's got the word anemone in there but just a beautiful stamp that could be used as a focal image or a background stamp so this is why i like if i can and it works and i feel the flow works when i'm designing then i like to sort of give those options i like to try and give as many options as possible so what i'm going to do is use the larger image in the stamp set and what I've tried to do with this the, the anemone is a beautiful flower now you can get anemones in red you can get them in purple you can get them in like a bluey purple you can get them in white pink so don't be limited by what you think it looks like in nature if you want to color it in yellow you color it in yellow whatever it's a floral it doesn't matter because we could be like if you were a gardener you might want to create you know um 
pollinate different varieties and create your own variety. No different in card making, I say. The same as gardening. If you were developing more, more ranges, more um, flower types, etc. So we've got the beautiful anemone here. Now, the way I coloured my flower is I've got my Ecoline pens, which is 579, and it is pastel violet. And then I've got ultramarine violet, which is 507. So what I'm going to do, let's bring in the acrylic block so I can just add a little bit of water just at the top of the acrylic block. And I'm just going to add, I do look, ah, there's one thing we've forgotten. When you're using the Bristol Smooth, you should always give it a blot. And the reason you should give it a blot is the Bristol Smooth is super smooth. That's why I like it. That's the reason I love it for the Ecoline pens, because it is just even smoother than the Pink Frog Frog Super Smooth. It's just, it's, it's divine. So what I'm doing is laying down the first colour. I'm not being too precise. I'm just laying down a touch of that colour. So that was the pastel violet. Let's not put the lid on yet. And then we've got the ultramarine violet. And I'm just going to add some of the darkness. Do you know, I do make myself laugh. I said to you, oh, I won't colour all the petals. And then I go and do all the petals. There's just no hope is the, for this woman. So just add... Just going to add a little, little bit of darkness where the vein is. So you just go where inspiration takes you. You know, and if these aren't your colours, then you use colours that make you happy. I'm just going to blend out the lines a little bit, just a little bit more with the, the lighter colour. It just helps when I go to blend. like I would with alcohol inks. So I've got my water and then I'm going to take the lightest colour as I always do, pick up the water and I'm going to blend with a watered down version of the first colour and just blend that. You might not see it very well in camera but I have to say for me the Bristol Smooth is just the perfect partner with the uh, ultramarine. So I'm then going to go with the darker colour and then just mix in the darker colour. So just mix that in. The pink frog works well, but I, this is slightly different and slightly smoother. But you know, we've all got the, the pink frog in our collection, so you can just use that. So I'm just going in and just blend that out. And then what I'm going to do is take the light colour, which is very light, and just pick that up and just add a little bit more of that light colour. And if you want, so this is where I started and this is how I created. Let me bring in the ones that I've done already. So these are the ones that I spent a little bit more time on. And then what you can go do, what you can go do, what you can then do is just go over again with the lighter colour, just very lightly, just press over very lightly, just with the lighter colour, just to give it a little bit more of a tone with that colour. And what I've done is I've coloured one with slightly less of the darker colour than the other, 
just to make it look more naturalistic just so you can see that now when i bring in this background i want to add a little bit of white underneath before i add these so what I'm doing is I'm allowing these two flowers to rest before I add any touches of white. So let's bring in that stencil when I was, that's what I was first going to do. So bring in where my flowers are going to go. So they're going to go around about there. So what I'm going to do is pick up my VersaFine Claire, not VersaFine Claire, Versamark like how I can't think of the names of my ink pads so I'm going to pick up my Versa mark and I can see from here where I just want a touch of white so we want I want a couple of hearts just at the top there so I'm going to take my Versa, fine, Versa mark watermark stamp pad whatever sticky ink pad you wish to use that's absolutely fine and I'm just using a little bit of cut and dry foam just to add the hearts just here so I'm going to add a couple of hearts there which I can see okay and then maybe a little heart here you know you're just having a suggestion of these white hearts you're not overpowering the design, you're just giving touches of white. Right, let's just have a look at those and see what we've got. Because you can put the embossing powder on and then see what you've got and where everything is. So I can see, have we missed a little bit there? Yep. We can see where we've got the hearts. So what we can do now is put that out the way. Bring in your flowers, don't touch your embossing. So we can see them there, yep. Yeah. So you just want to see a little bit of them. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of the, the same here. Like so. Just add a little bit of the hearts. And you just want those touches of white. Move that out of the way. Bring in our embossing again. And because I've used that anti-static bag, it's worked beautifully. Where's my brush? I've decided I don't want that bit there. So say you add, you add a heart like I've done and you don't want it, you just use your brush to take away the little bit that you don't want. Right. There we go. So we'll remove that white embossing. And then we'll use our heat tool. Right, let's plug that in. And I'm going to heat up my heat tool before I go to the card. And it's funny because I've just noticed, she said as she was about to heat, there's a little bit there that I don't need. Just part of a heart that I don't want. Right, let's heat that up. So we can just heat, and obviously you're only going to see part of the image because that's, that's the point, it's sort of tucked away in the background. Let's just give that. I'm just heating the heat tool up because there's no point going straight to that card without heating the tool up because all you do is bend the card. You know, the card curls even more. So I'm just giving that a bit of time and then we'll go into it. And I 
hopefully that will change soon. There we go, it's going now. Just lift the card up a little bit and it, it goes nicely. a little bit it goes a little bit quicker because it's not trying to heat the craft mat as well and as always once I've heated that I'm moving it away from the area I've just heated and moving it to heat the other areas there we go oh got an itch now So we've got the beautiful touches of white and what I've done is I plugged in my glue gun just so that I've got that ready but it just looks beautiful and it is white definitely white in the in the flesh right so what I can do now is I can play around just with my design and I can see that where I want to add you can play around and you know just add it where you want but I want to see a little bit of those hearts so I can see that they are definitely hearts which I just love but let's just do a little bit of white work on the flowers because that just helps to lift everything now if you want to colour the leaves with a touch of green you can I can add, you can add a touch of green I'm not doing that because I want the leaves to pop against the background just so that the flower doesn't get completely lost in the background so I'm just adding some little touches of white just to make that pop a little bit more there we go it's just worth doing a little bit of the white because it just lifts the design a little bit there we go that's it and then this is where I faff around because I just love doing that okay so let's take our flowers and we'll just move them out of the way for the 55th time and we'll just bring in some white cotton now this is how i create the whole time so just i'm always pulling it off putting it on pulling it off So I'm just doing some simple techniques. I'm not doing anything too complicated. I'm just being honest with you because my brain can't take it. It's frazzled in the heat and it's got no chance. So I'm just adding some of that white cotton. There we go. Now, before I add the white cotton, let me just test. Yes, so I'm going to add, before I put that on, a little bit, a little bit of stamping. And I'm going to use my Bulb Gazette, which is stamp set 907. And there's no point me saying, oh, that's a favourite stamp, because let's just be honest, I adore every one of my stamps. They're all my favourites. They're all my babies. So let's not repeat that. So let's just add a little bit of stamping here. And I'm using my grey Versafine, which is Morning Mist. I'm just going to add so I'm like, just going to add a little bit of stamping just here and there just so that I can I can see the details 
of the stamping. In some areas, I will add a little bit less than others. I'll just add touches. And what we'll do is we'll place the flowers again. You have to be a little bit patient when you're doing your stamping just to make sure that you just get that, that you get the details in the right place. There we go. So now we'll add our flowers. The little bit of stamping just adds a little bit of detail. So just spread that cotton out nicely. There we go. And we'll just add, you can also, if you wish, to make it look a little bit different, you can also cut in to your petals as well. You don't have to, you know, leave every one. You can make them look slightly different by just cutting in to certain areas just to give it a little bit of movement you don't have to do that you can keep them you know as they are but it just gives a little bit of movement to your design so that one will go down second just give just pinch them a little bit just to give a little bit of movement so i'm going to add a little blob on there it's like I'm talking to myself now if you just want to add the one flower you can add the one flower I'm going to add the two just move you down there that's it I'm talking to a card piece of flower just add that down there and I can just hold that down and just bend the petals that that's it that I've cut cross those over like so and don't worry about this because we're going to stick that down so what I'm going to do then is where are you I'm going to take my garden she wrote and i'm going to take the a for anemone let's grab an a7 acrylic block like so right let's make sure oh yes that's heating up nicely right let's have a look so this says purple delight Let's have a look what colour this really is. So we need to do it on pink frog card, don't we? So never go straight into your project with an ink. So this says it's purple delight. Would that be okay? Yeah, I think that would be okay. Just look at it again. Mm, no, I'm not convinced. Nothing like being a pain in the neck, am I? Let me just look at wilted violet. That's better, much better. Right, there's something on my face. Knowing my look, to be a green fly. So I'm just going to ink my A with a touch. It's hardly going to show up, but I just want to add a touch of the wilted violet. And what I'm going to do is take the card and I'm going to add some of the hot glue gun. Like so. And then I'm going to stamp the A into the hot glue and I'm going to have to let that cool now because it's not going to move so we'll just give that time to cool and I don't want to add my splatters yet because I'll just splatter my acrylic block and I'm going to leave that on because I may do a very 
simple card as well just with some clear embossing just for those of you that prefer clear embossing rather than white embossing I like to cater for everybody so I can pick that up and I can feel the heat in that so there's no point doing anything with that at the moment but we'll leave that on but what we'll do is we've got another piece of card four and a half inches by six and a half inches and what I'll do is I'll use the same stencil so why did you put the this the this mark away so you could go to your stencil and go like this but I will miss some of the fine detail areas so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly add some ink over the hearts so let's randomly add the ink just over again use your anti-static bag if you know that you've been handling the card a great deal use your anti-static bag if you just want to rush ahead or you have rushed ahead and used it then just have a brush ready just in case you've got a little bit of embossing powder that you're not happy where it is so just using just keep your embossing ink just away from the straight edges and you're just creating a very simple background now i've done this for many years as well as well as the white embossing but sometimes it's just not possible to fit everything in into one video so let's just add and what you can do you can just lift your stencil holding the other half in place so that you don't move it and you can just lift your stencil up and check whether you've got the detail that you want and I can see that little heart there and some of this would be covered up if you're going to add detail let's lift that up again and I'm just looking at it from different angles you could probably can't see me moving my head just so that I can see different angles and I'm just going to leave it at that right let's move that right now let's use what's I do with the copy paper nobody knows I think I've, it's flown off because I've got the I've got the fan on oh no I haven't it's there there we go so what I'm going to do this time is use if I've got clear Now this is a clear gloss from WOW. Oh, fan on, not a good idea. So this is a clear embossing powder and it's clear gloss, super fine from WOW. Okay. So I can see that I've got most of that covered. I'm not bothered if it's not all brilliant as long as I've got what, you know, definitely looks like hearts. And this is a fine embossing powder. So fine, in fact, I can't see some areas, but there you go. But it serves its purpose. So let's lose the clear. Now I know some of you have seen me do this over and over again. Some of you have seen me do this over and over again so I'm just going to let me just remove that embossing powder that I've just got there 
all over my top. So again, I'm just heating that up. Let's just move this so we don't go and heat that card. So I'm just heating the heat tool up. And then I'm just, oh, and I can see, isn't it funny? I've heated it up. And then just before, I can see a little bit of the straight line. There we go. Nothing like being fussy. So I'm just going to heat this up now, which of course you won't see because it's clear, which doesn't really help. I think that one's, oh yes, if I tilt it slightly, I can see that. So I can just move it. Sometimes with the clear, you do need to tilt it. Do, like if anybody's mentioned anything I do like to bring it up in another video mainly because I'll, I've done it years ago and I've done it in lots of videos and I've done it in workshops but sometimes if I haven't done it for a while then people think I haven't mentioned it in the YouTube video and I'll get a message to say oh well have you tried this and I've done it many times but because I haven't mentioned it in that video you know I like to be as informative as possible and as inclusive as possible. And let's just like that. And I like to show you the differences as well. I do apologise that it's very difficult to see the clear, but I will lift this up for you. There we go, it's going nicely. I think I've got every area. I've got every area. That'll be fine. Okay. Right. So what we've got now, oh, you can see that. You can see the clear embossing. Did lilac here or why is the colour that you always want the last colour that you find? So I've got my shaded lilac. I'm sure I've got another one. of you ever demo you'll you'll understand that things go missing so quickly I know where it is now is it there no oh, that's the we'll use my old one can't find where the other one is at the moment right let's grab So I'm going to use my brush because, to be honest, it's the first thing that I've caught. Now, this shaded lilac is not the best, I have to say. Ah, I've got it. Yay! Because this one was from workshops and it's a little bit dry. So I like to keep it for different techniques. So I'm going to use my brush. And what I need to do is just use a piece of kitchen roll, just so that I don't get my mucky paw prints just over the card. So just go over. So again, like I did with the white, this time it's clear embossed rather than white embossed. I'll just go over. 
and because I'm using a brush what I like to do is if I want a very light covering then I won't add as much ink but I want a little bit more of a covering so I don't tend to hold it up here just to get more ink I hold it there and just make sure that I grab some of that ink so I'm just blending over with my paler colour like so and then I'm going to use the wilted violet and bring in some of the darker colour not in all the areas just so you know you can see that shaded lilac and what I would say is don't think about it too much when you're adding the second colour try to be a little bit more random if you want really rich darker colour then swipe your ink pad across the card and it'll be richer and darker in colour sometimes that's why I save my, my drier ink pads but say you wanted to go over with the paler colour you can then just go like this and just add some of the paler colour. It just depends what kind of look you want to go for, whether you're going for a very soft look, whether you want it highly pigmented. If you want to go for a softer look, then your brushes give you that nicely. But can you see that's got a lot more pigment on? But I'm just trying to show you different ways that you can just add your pigment and you can blend that out just with your brush and also with your cut and dry foam, your blending tools and you've got this ink all on here. You could pick that up with another piece of card. Obviously, if I do that, you're going to be, you'll have me on your video for eight hours and you'll be yawning to sleep. So we won't do that. So what I'm going to do then is just, you can use an almost dry baby wipe and then I'm just going to wipe over the card. And the white embossing, no, the clear embossing, is obviously got the, the white card underneath and takes on that colour. So that's just another way that you can do your techniques. The same way I did with the white embossing, but I did it with clear. And the clear takes on the colour from the white card underneath. So I just wanted to make sure that I did add that information, even though I've done it many times before, just so that uh, when I'm emailed any information, people don't think I'm ignoring emails or messages that come through to me. So then we can easily create another card with that. Right, let's just move that out of the way, but I'll use a different stamp set for that. Let me just, where was I now? So I'm just getting under my stamp set there because obviously the glue will have stuck to my stamp and you can see it's got the A and it's even got the Asti just in there. And then I just think that's a lovely touch. Let's just put that back. And I can see a little tiny touch of purple in there. But I don't want to add paint like I did to my last one that was in black. I want to leave it clear just as an embellishment. Asta. So I'm going to add the word anemone because I want the A for anemone. Let's bring in that stamp set. And we'll use a different stamp for the other card. Just so I can show you that, you know, the stamps bring lots of variety. Let's just add, come on, Trace. There we go. And then, what have I, no, that is not the word anemone. Don't jump ahead. So I've got the word anemone from the same stamp set. There we go. Use my black ink. Let's find some of that pink frog card that I've now got absolutely everywhere and stamp that anemone there we go again I don't have to press very hard 
because that's a sentiment stamp and it's just not needed so right cut that out and I'm going to leave that in the white just so that it pops leave my scissors there just so I can find them just going to add a little bit of a black edge and if you you smudge or you nudge yourself and you don't get a perfect black edge don't worry about it just stamp another anemone out I always wipe the black up straight away because you can get in a terrible mess so I've got the word anemone now and I can just add this onto my little um, wax seal. So let's just add this to there. Just going to adhere just at this edge, just here. Just, of course, I need to give it a few seconds just to grab hold. grabbed hold yes you have and then I'm just going to take my little bird because I have to add a little bird come on Trace where's my little oh that's because I used the bulb gazette didn't I you see you have to remember what you've done 10 minutes ago so I'm going to use my quilt ends just so I can have that little beard because we love that little beard. Just so I can add him to my project. And I've used the background then that I promised myself I was going to use. And you can colour the little flower in if you wish on the bird. On this occasion, I'm not. There we go. Now I've got my thumb stuck in the scissors, like you do. And I'm just going to mess around to decide where I'm going to add my little bird. And often look through your camera to see where you want to add your beard and you will visualize something completely different to how I visualize something and that's why art is always subjective because we see things differently you know and we can't we can't like everything but we can appreciate the work that goes into something so let's just add my little beard there looking at my flower and then we'll add some white splatters just add a few of those splatters just around my card there we go and just wipe up any little stray just so that you can see the beautiful detail and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to add a black mat I want the freshness of the white on this occasion so I'm going to add this to the white card blank as is if you want to add a black mat that is absolutely fine if you're going to use your Posca pen it's sometimes better to add your Posca pen around the edges before you actually do all your work because then if you smudge it, it's not a problem. It's just the card you've smudged and not ruined all your background. There we go. So just add that 
So that. There we go. And you can see this is the reason that I came online is to do this card, which I absolutely love. Adore that. Absolutely love it. And that's what matters if you love it. So let's just place that on one side. Now, I wasn't going to do another card, but we've got this now because I was answering a question. So why not use it? We may as well use it. So let's have a look what we've got. In the new release, let's move some of this. No, we'll, I might use that. This is what I'm like. In my new release, let me see if I can find it. There we go. We've got the little leaf with the butterflies on. Just love this stamp. And it's called Leaf is Better 977. Okay, so I'm going to use this leaf. Which I'm bound to lose when I want it. So what I'm going to do is use an, a bigger acrylic block. But just look at that. I just love that image. I'm going to use a bigger acrylic block. Like so. And then I'm going to grab a scrap of card. There we are. Now, where's my bundled? Now, you have to remember, I haven't planned this. Bundled sage. So I think it was, oh, I know what I've done before. Isn't it funny you just remember what the colour is? There it is. So I haven't planned this. It's just happened while we were doing the prep and I was creating the other card. So that's when it happened. The other thing I need to do is because... I've added all that ink. I also need to give this a polish. That's it. Just to polish that up a bit. That's better. You should do that really, especially if you're using um, the anti-static bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go direct to paper. And this is old paper. Ha! Huh, rather apt. So this is called old paper. And then I've got bundled sage. Now, I'm not being careful about this. I'm just scrubbling it on. That's a professional turn. Let's add a little bit of cracked pistachio. A little bit of cracked. Can you see I'm doing it really professionally? <laughs> there we go. So I've literally touched it. It's got lines. It's got everything. Just spritz that with water and just give it a couple of seconds to do its thing. So you can see, nothing nothing professional about that, just adding colour, just getting it to oxidise. And then we'll just give that a dry. So we'll just give this a dry. bit of salvage patina. Let's just add a little bit of salvage patina. That's nice. So a little bit of salvage patina. Just spritz it with water again and let it do its thing. 
So just letting that sit there a little bit. And obviously, if you were sort of working at home, you can let that dry naturally. You don't need to heat it with your heat tool. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is take my stamp set, preferably stamping on the dry area. I'm just going to ink that up. Give that a really good inking because I haven't had time to ink this stamp yet. So give that a really good inking. And just stamp over. Again, you've got those oxides on there, so you really need to give that time just to soak in to the card. Don't rush that. Lift your acrylic block. That's why I've not placed it on an A7 acrylic block. Just so that I can leave it, the acrylic block. Now, I need to make sure that that's blotted because it's got the oxide on there. And we need to make sure because it will lift some of the ink. There we go. Just plug myself back in. Just plugging myself back in. Not me personally, but you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is just cut that out on the cutting machine. You can tear it out if you wish. So you can tear that out if you prefer. Keep those bits. And you can also have, you can have it as an ATC, which would work beautifully as well. So that would work rather nicely. And I'm going to distress the edges. Those of you that have got uh, paper distressers, then you can use that. I do have to give out a warning that I'm using the edge of scissors so please be careful so I'm just distressing some of that card okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in a little bit of the salvage patina just to my purple so bring that in a little bit of salvage patina direct to paper just to bring a touch of that colour in so I'm just doing a little bit of direct to paper just bring in a little bit of that direct to paper if you don't want it on your heart you can just wipe that away so I'm then going to stamp the leaf once again onto the little bit of card I've got left, just so that I've got the leaf on its own. Just so you've got that on its own. And I can just cut that out. Again, just allowing that ink just to sit on there, just to give it time, just to absorb into the card. And again, I will just blot that to save me. And there's quite a bit of ink that has come off that. So I shall just blot that a second time, which means there's more of a concentration of oxide ink on there. And what I'm going to do then is cut out the leaf. I'm 
just then because I can have my 3D element. To my card so I'm just going around literally up to the line is my 3D piece. Right, let's there we go. And then I've got my leaf that I can add as a 3D element, which is going to go over here. So what I'm going to do is just add some white cotton just to bring a little bit of vibrancy and texture to my design and then I'll add the leaf with a 3D element just so that that gives me a little bit of 3D. So we're just building up our composition at the moment. So we'll just place that there. And then what I need to do is just add some of the purple don't think there'll be enough on there. But let's grab a little bit more of the wilted violet. Okay. Let's just pick it up, Tracy. Just add a little bit of the wilted violet just to my little, my little uh, sort of ATC size. This is an A7 stamp. So obviously I'm trying to ink something that wants to move, which is understandable. I'm then going to take the leaf again. There we go. Do you know? I've inked that up and I can't think whether I've got both butterflies now anyway. Oh, what am I like? I was in a little world then of my own. Oh, I did. Did I ink them both? Yes, I have. I had to look then a couple of times. Let's just give that a blot. There we go. Let's just cut out the butterfly. Just to add to our little card. Again, another element that is easy to cut out. And let's cut the top out as well. So I'm just cutting out as much or as little of the butterfly as I need because don't forget you've got that butterfly stamped underneath I'm 
Let's just round that off and forget that bit. That's it. Right, so let's bring in our little butterflies that I can then add here. So let's get my adhesive. And you can see I'm just enjoying myself creating my composition. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit of adhesive that doesn't work because I haven't added enough. Just get your scissors. That will work, Tracy. And just press that down. I, don't, I want to make sure there's some movement in the design, but obviously I don't want to squash that leaf down. Just add a little bit of adhesive here. Obviously, when you're doing it, you're not going to have everything moving. Right. What I want to do then is just, let's just grab the plastic packaging. If you could see how much I'm chucking on the floor. So if I had my, yep. Yeah. So we've got one, this anemone already stamped, if you remember from earlier i know it's a pain you can fast forward if you don't want to watch me cutting out now just fast forward and what i'm going to do with this one is i'm not going to cut the leaves out so i'm just going to cut the anemone just so i've got the plain flower may cut the right hand side leaf out because the left the, sorry the left hand side leaf out because the right hand leaf won't be seen because I'm, I'm tucking it sort of behind my little sort of 80 size toppy let's and now this has had time just to rest a little bit so i can do a little bit more work on the flower and the coloring now i didn't plan on doing two cards it's just where inspiration took me which is what I love about creating and if you're creating cards and you say well I don't want to create cards just put them in your journal as a as a keepsake and for something to look back on I think that's a good thing as well if you want to look back on them it's really nice So I just want this leaf here. What will make me laugh is if I decide, I cut the leaf out and then I decide, no, I don't want the leaf. Oh, sorry, I just knocked the camera then. I was getting all, all excited and knocked the camera. And what I like to do is having all this card can be quite limiting so let's just do you like then i tried not to put my hand across the camera 28 years and i might actually be getting professional <laughs> right just cut that down So just take your time in cutting the leaf out. It had better be worthwhile cutting this leaf out after I've done it. I've done that before now, cut the leaves out and then thought, oh no, I don't really want the leaf. Now I'm going to have to go around there because I don't want that white. to describe every bit of cutting that I'm doing you know because you really need to know that not right at this stage don't cut your stem off but if you do don't stress about it right okay so I'm going to do a bit more work on the flower you could have it just here like that or I'm going to have it 
No, I like it like that. Isn't it funny how when you do a composition, mm, this is why you don't stick anything down immediately. Right, so let's just do a little bit of work, a little bit more of that colour. You always think you've done with colouring and then I always add a little bit more. And you know what I'm going to say now? You need to add a touch of that white work. So let's just add a little bit of the white. And this area here is dry. I just added a little bit of the colour to the edges. So that's why my white is working. So what I'm going to do then is let's remove this and then let's bring in a little bit of text from the Bulb Gazette. Again, using our grey morning mist, which I can never pick up. And you will, you will know that I haven't got a card ready for this because it wasn't planned. So you do realise that I'm going to have to cut a card, but you're used to that by now. So I'm just going to add a little bit of random stamping. I can always add a little bit more if I wish when I've got my composition down. Right. So let's take, let me just cut down on that petal just to give a little bit of movement. It's up to you whether you cut the, into the petals or you just leave it as it is. I'm just giving a little bit of movement and I'm going to faff about a hundred times. So I need a little bit of stamping down on the left hand side. Just to add that. love this cotton. Okay, so sort of like that. So what I'm going to do is add my little topper first, just so I can move it around and decide where that's going. And I'm using my tonic glue my deluxe glue now what i need to remember is don't press it down until i've got it in the right place there we go i'm not pressing that down yet that's it now i can press it down and you can curl a little bit up just to and then take some more cotton I haven't forgotten about my glue gun. I know some of you are probably thinking, Tracy, that glue gun. So let's just add a little bit of cotton here. Let's just put the lid on that. And just add a little bit of adhesive there. Just with that. Let's just it that's it nothing like being pernickety right. so what i'm going to do then is take my a again my little a and this time create an embellishment piece rather than do it straight on my card so come on little glue gun don't let me down now press that A in there and this time I've done it on my non-stick craft sheet 
and I can peel that away just because then I can have an embellishment. So I shall leave that there and unplug my hot glue gun. And try and keep that hot glue gun somewhere where it can't cause any damage because that will still be very hot. So put it somewhere it can't cause any damage. So whilst I'm waiting for that, plus trust me, put it there right in the middle of me. So let's just add some white splatters to a card that we didn't even plan on doing. And you're going to bear with me, hopefully, while well, I just cut a card out, so just bear with me. So I'm just taking a piece of A3 card and I'm just creating a card blank from an A3 piece of card. My little card blank which is five by seven can we always feel your acrylic block and you can see if it's hot these are high quality photopolymer stamps and as you can see the stamps actually peeled away because that is still not cool enough so whilst that cools down we'll then grab let's grab what, what words have we got let's uh, go to the anemone and there's another sentiment on there, so let's use that one. Just while that cools down, a little A7 acrylic block. And our black ink that's getting absolutely buried under everything, like it does. Spread a little happiness. Again, lovely fine font. So again, you don't need to press too hard. And of course, I put the scissors back the minute I need them again. Can you tell I adore stamps? Right, can we lift this? So just take your to move that out of the way just take your non-stick craft sheet and just peel that away and I've now got my lovely little embellishment and in your project when you look at it it really adds something to it now let me just see what about if I... <laughs> it's not a permanent ink pad. let's just try a little bit this permanent ink. There we go. Just to give it a tint of colour. And that was the Purple Delight, which is just right just for this little piece. It wasn't right for the whole card. Let me just clean that. And you can just see it's got a little tint of colour. Okay, and we're going to add that to our composition. I think I want it just there, like that. Do I? I'm going to faff around for ages because that's just me all over. I want it here, just in my composition, because this is here. I don't want to just plonk it just anywhere because that doesn't make sense. I think it's going to be there and then the sentiment. I just want all the composition to be here. That's it. So let's add a little blob of that. Just to Take that down. 
Is that hard? I think that's a hard bit of glue, you know. I don't think that is. That's because I've just left it out on my desk. Let's try again. That's it. And then I'm going to take the... Let me just wipe my hands. Just want to make sure I don't get any marks over there. And then that leaf really stands out with the purple. But I just want to keep that white just so that it pops. Sometimes I add a little black edge, sometimes I don't. I just want that pop of white. And when this is dry, when you're not, you know, messing around with, I want you to go in and just add a few touches of white just to the butterfly. It's a little bit, or, well, it's not a little bit, it's almost impossible um, when you've, you've got it lifted up and it's not fully dry. So what I'm going to do then is then add that to my white five by seven card mount. So let's just add this here. So we've created a card that I'd planned to create and then a card that we didn't we didn't plan on doing. Do you like the we that I didn't plan on doing? But then inspiration struck and it's like let's go with two cards. Now you can get these stamp sets on create and craft and again I have different viewers tuning in all the time, so I'll just show you. I will hold both cards up, but I'll just show you where you can get the stamps from. So if you go to createandcraft.com and you go to the calendar, and if you go to last Thursday or Friday, and you go to six o'clock, all and create one day special in this show, you can see the bundle there. And you can also see the singles as well. And it's already at the reduced price. So if you would like the bundle or any of the stamps, you can get them from Create and Craft. And Janet Pring will be back on the TV this Friday, the 16th, 16th of June, three and seven. Now let me show you the two cards that we've created and I absolutely love them, absolutely love them. So I hope you've enjoyed the process and I hope you enjoy the video. Love to all, happy Tuesday and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.